In my quest for the ultimate flare gun, I've come up with several fantasy calibers and fantasy designs. Today is inspired by one that is more of a nightmare. And I'm going to state up front, disclaimer, the completely made up cartridge diameters and chamber diameters that would go with it that I'm coming up with are rounded off and are inspired by something I'm going to talk about in the last half of the video and have an angry rant about. I'm totally not telling you about a proprietary cartridge that's out there that is run by a company that fucked people over. This is not related at all. I derived this from looking at pictures. So it's a remix and it's under fair use. This is my art. Bullet diameter, 50 caliber. Neck or shoulder diameter, because it's a tapered cartridge. 0.588 inches. Base diameter, before the rim, 0.62 inches. Rim diameter is 0.757 inches. These are approximate. Use it for video games and toys, not for real stuff. The thickness of the rim is ridiculously thick because it's an entirely plastic, roll-crimped shotgun shell used for some stupid purpose. There we go. Comically, it's 0.176 inches thick. It looks like a lot like a toy gun cartridge. Like, literally, it looks like a duplicate of one. A suspiciously nerfed one. The overall length of this cartridge is 3.345 inches or so. And above the rim, because the rim is so thick, we have to mention this, it's actual depth for chamber, because the rim is presumed to be a solid mass, is 3.17 inches, or 3.2. This is based on being inspired by totally not measuring pixel for pixel to get these numbers perfect. A cartridge that was put out as a blank for shotguns, because it has a roll crimp and every other characteristic, that's totally plastic and looks like a PUBG flare cartridge that some kid might get a hold of, that took a 209 shotgun primer, but it's totally not based on a shotgun shell called the 28 gauge, or maybe a 29 or 30 gauge shotgun shell at all. And it's bright red or almost orange, looking exactly like a PUBG flare gun cartridge that a kid might get a hold of and fuck around with. By the way, I want one. And, as someone noted, will chamber in a Nerf gun. Uh, icon for the video will be the diagram, and the image here below will list it and show it to you. But again, this is my art. These are rounded off numbers to three or four digits. I'm totally not trying to get this perfect. So, let's talk about this. 50 caliber... 270 grain, copper, all copper, copper jacketed, saboted slug. It's not 50 caliber, the sabo, the plastic around it, in what looks exactly like a shot cup for a 28 gauge shotgun. The 50 caliber, 270 grain slug comes out of the barrel for a muzzle velocity of 1,766, not, six, not 1776, it's 1766 feet per second. And has a muzzle energy, at muzzle, of 1,870 foot-pounds. It's basically an elephant gun. Now, that's the rating and information provided by, and on the Wikipedia page for, that's been very much sandbagged and harassed into shit, for a particular gun and cartridge using, really, a standard 50 caliber muzzle loader barrel as the basis. The Traditions Company put out something called the Nitro Fire. It's a break action center fire hunting rifle that's technically listed as a muzzle loader on the state level in some states. Other states said no, it is not. Because it has a chamber in it that looks exactly like a 28 gauge or Hypothetical 29 or 30 gauge shell would go into it. It'll fit in a 28. That has this little 
peculiarity that's different than any muzzleloader. First of all, it's a breech loader, obviously, for the propellant packet, which is, again, a shotgun blank. But they sell the shotgun blanks without the primer, so it's sold as propellant and a reloading supply. We'll get to that in a minute. You put a primer in it, shove it in there. Now, if you look through it, you'll notice that there's rifling in there, and then there's a rim. Not not a rim like people talk about when they're looking down and they see the forcing cone. It's a real rim. It changes from the diameter of the cartridge next down and then next back up to 50 caliber. So it's essentially a washer. Why is it there? So you can't just stick the 50 caliber bullet down in there and then just use this to shove it home and make it easy to load as a breech loading, very obvious rifle that just has a big propellant pack so you can use gunpowder. Actual black powder in it. Black powder takes up more space, four or five to one, or actually it's four or five times heavier, not by volume, uh, for smokeless powder. Now the funny thing about this is it uses a proprietary cartridge that doesn't fit anything else, 28 gauge, and uh, what they did is they used smokeless powder so it's not using black powder. And then they put some other ingredients in it to big, you know, make it take up more space. So we use the same measurement, propellant for propellant, for black powder. And it would have a similar pressure curve because, if you're not aware of it, black powder is basically a propellant that has a bunch of extra stuff that doesn't burn. Like 50% of it doesn't burn. And it has the cumulative effect of reducing its power level more than 50%. A lot. So anyway, after, we're, after this narrowed rim, that separates the propelled the projectile from this propellant charge in what looks like a shotgun blank because it is that. That's what everybody called it. Now, this shotgun blank, how, how much do you think it costs for a 410 or a 28 gauge shotgun shell? 28 gauge shotgun shells can be expensive. You know, that's why people want to reload them. We're going to get to that in a minute. But no, no, the company called Federal Ammunition or Federal Gun Works or whatever, put out this cartridge for $2.70 each because that's a fucking bargain in 2020 during ammo shortages and a pandemic and a hunting season where people normally use a, a black powder weapon or like this, you know, muzzleloader because you can just buy the propellant and the projectiles and the primers and it's cheap, really cheap. Like it can cost you a quarter or a tenth depending on the ammunition you're trying to emulate, you can just reload. And because this basically has a muzzleloader, if you're not aware, is just a gun that is essentially a shotgun shell with a long barrel on it. I mean, it's just the whole thing is loaded like you do a shotgun shell. You have to reload it like you reload a cartridge. And this is done, and it's given, by the way, a longer hunting uh, season or a different hunting season uh, because it's considered a primitive way of hunting, like using a bow and arrow or throwing a spear. So how is it primitive when you break the action like you do a normal shotgun, put a shell in that looks like a shotgun shell, push the primer in, close it, and only do one thing under unusual, putting the projectile down into it from the muzzle. The ATF declared the cartridge itself to be, well, as the name implies, a fixed cartridge for ammunition. It just is incomplete by a couple of components. They said, that no, if you're going to breech load it and it has all the other characteristics, well, most of them, we're going to call it that. And then the projector goes in from the muzzle. That's that's nice. But the gun itself is also because it can. you could put a 28-gauge shell in it pretty much and fire it through. That means it's technically a firearm at that point because it'll take, if you push it, uh, all sorts of cartridges, including apparently a 410 shell will kind of fit into it. Almost. Any hoot. Um, yeah, they decide, no, you can't have that be that way. So you have to serialize it. Now, the funny thing is, this would be a bad day because it would drive up prices or something. But again, the cartridge is ridiculously expensive. Like, it's like six times more expensive than a normal cartridge. And a lot more expensive than just buying the propellants and using a real muzzleloader. But, but the other thing is the gun was obscenely expensive, even though it couldn't use normal reloading supplies for black powder. Because they told you, you can't just take the fire stick, the cartridge, and reload it, even though you absolutely can. It's a roll-crimped cartridge that you try to make we couldn't re reload. And anyway, it says right on it, it's equivalent to 100 to 120 grains of propellant, gunpowder. Well, then you could just load it with gunpowder. And again, this isn't gunpowder, again, because it used smokeless powder, but they put in some filler material. 
It's breech loading, not muzzle loading. It uses modern primer with a casing. The component of it for quote unquote fixed cartridge ammunition is propellant, primer, and projectile in a case. By providing the case with this and putting most of the components in it except for one thing, the projectile, it's cased ammunition. It doesn't matter that it's a blank. It's a blank propelled gun. You might as well remove the little rim in it after you buy it because it's still considered a, a gun and just drop the cartridge in after you drop the bullet in and just push it, push it home and fire it. Why, why stand on ceremony and stupidity here? It's not a muzzle loader. But some states allowed it because technically you had to load one thing from the end. And they weren't going to release the propellant, because it's proprietary, until 2021. And they didn't release the chamber diameters or chamber specifications or anything. Now, I'm going to be nice here. It's a rockin' gun. It's really cool. But since it's been declared to be a firearm, they should just make it without the rim. And make it where you can just drop the, car- drop the bullet in and push in the cartridge. And just make it that way because you can you can you can also make it reloadable and just say you can reload it and just use an, an, a standard cartridge. Now I want to point out again, the cartridge looks for all the world like a cartoonish or video game rounded off error version of a flare gun cartridge. Uh, there's actually a flare gun cartridge that was made like that at one point. I'm not kidding about this part, and it just has a really thick base to it and it's really ugly looking. I'll make it the icon for the video if I can. Why did they do this? Scalping people for 270 per pop for 120 grains of Hodgkin? It's triple eight instead of triple seven? The gun industry, if you're not aware of it, has to survive between wars. It can't just supply ammunition in bulk to the U.S. military. The U.S. military does not consume enough ammunition, so they make money off of ordinary users. One of the tactics they use is to tell everybody, they're coming for your guns. It doesn't matter how many Republicans are running the government. They're going to keep yelling it. But when that fails, let's make a ridiculously expensive, convoluted gun that's actually a little bit easier to load than a muzzleloader. It is waterproof, and it defeats the whole purpose of experiencing what it was like for Pioneer Day people to go out and hunt with a muzzleloader. Next, I want to point out, if you want to do a muzzle-loading method that's easier and faster and is safer, they make muzzle-loading bullets. They make the powder charges in discrete components. I mean, I don't like them, but they're solid pellets. Grab that. And you can just stick a primer in the back end of it. I'm not kidding about it. You can put a primer into it that will work. I, I, I've seen a video where someone figured out how to make a primer pocket, and then they put a little you know paper disc behind it, and shoved it in there, and then what they do is they just push it into the gun, the whole thing, and what they did is they made sure that they had an inline muzzle loader, and then they adapted it to where it had a firing pin in the back. So it literally is muzzle loading everything. That's still considered until you after after you assemble it. That's considered a cartridge because they're all put together if you wrap it in paper or whatever. But you don't have to just put them in in sequence. If you want to do it faster and easier, that makes it easier. You're still doing one motion, but now you don't have to break open the area and put in a primer or have a cap on it. But again, that isn't going to be okay with most states because they want you to actually be dealing with you know environmental variables ruining the powder or the primers. It, it takes the whole point of you getting an extra season for it. You don't need it. You're just using a, a break action, essentially shotgun here that fires a slug through a rifled barrel, and you're trying to get out of it for, you know... You want to use the seat? This is a rant. Again, the information on the cartridge that's proprietary that they didn't release information for will be listed below, as well as I've said it. And it'll be in the icon. During a pandemic, you guys jacked people financially, and everybody acted like it was a revolution in firearms, and it was such a wonderful, generous thing for them to do. Are you people just part of a stupid cult where you beat yourself with a brick? Thanks for watching that.